Welcome to the Spinner Rack with your hosts, Brian and Junior. Welcome back to the Spinner Rack. Issue 31, as always, I'm your host, Big B, Brian Adams. And joining me as always is my co-host, Junior Ruiz, co-host the Comics Remix. As uh, we're finally back from our winter break and... Uh, Return of the Rack, say again, Return of the Rack. That's that shit. That, that's good stuff right there. Yeah, that's classic, that's man. That's good stuff. And as always, you know, there's a lot, a lot to talk about here that's happening in comics since we've been away, and recently. And uh, some of it you're going to love, some of it you're going to hate, some of it you're going to be uh, indifferent about. Like uh, Jeff Johns and John Fida on Superman. Junior and Johns and Superman. How do you feel about that, Junior? I like Johns. Yeah. Johns, Johns, to me, is the, uh, the Bendis at Marvel. Does that make sense? It does. Because Bendis, and right now I think his second in command would be Jonathan Hickman. Those guys are writing everything that control pretty much the main Marvel universe, the Avengers and the X Men. And um, with Johns, I look at Johns like that as well. Johns and at a time Mark Wade, because we know Mark Wade constantly works back and forth. But uh, Jeff Johns is like the Bendis of DC, He's like the go to guy. You know, you need something done, you get Johns. And you know, coming up, also Jeff Lemire and Scott Snyder. But you know, regardless, at the end of the day, it's still Johns is the number one writer. So, no, I'm absolutely. Like, I think he's great. I, I like most of his stuff. He's done a hell of a job on Aquaman, and you would think he could bring something to Superman. Hopefully, I mean, he's written Superman in the past in action. Yeah. Great runs. Uh, Unfortunately, though, his run on Superman Unchained. Yeah, that was an epic they're, fail. They're, you know, I mean, Jimmy, yeah, no, totally. Yeah. Yeah, if you didn't know, Superman Unchained, bye. But again, I, I also think that's just oversaturation. Uh, that's proof that the market doesn't need a third Superman book. Well, why does it need a third one when the first two they're supposed to be flagship titles for DC really aren't? Right. I mean, at least action should be a flagship title for DC. No, I agree. It's horrible. It is. Where I get kind of, uh... Romita's artwork. Romita, and, man. It's, uh, you know, is, is Superman going to look like kick-ass now? Did you see the sample work they showed? Or, like, yeah. know, like floating in the sky and shit? Yeah. I don't like it. I don't yeah, like do it. I. I mean, I'm a fan of Romita, yeah, but so I'm also I. a firm believer that certain... Uh, so artists artist should only handle certain characters. Yes, but. in Romita's case, number one on my list for him is Punisher, and the only other Punisher, like premier Punisher villains, or excuse me, villains. I don't know what the fuck. Uh, artists I can think of are Tim Bradstreet, uh, Steve Dillon. Dillon, no, I, I was hoping those, you were going to say those Dillon three are too. like the in my in my opinion those are like the Punisher artists, you know, and only those guys should work on Punisher. So you're kind of you'll wait and see on Superman by these two. Don't I mean, I'm still I'm still going to read it. I've I'm not one of those guys that follows the stories because of the writers or the artists. I follow because I like the characters. Well, I don't really feel like this is following artists or writers at this point. I think it's just hoping that these two guys could do a good Superman book. I don't know, because then... It, it, look, put it this way. Because I've been on and off of Superman. So, and you... you okay, let, let, me, let me ask you. I hope this comes out the way that's making sense in my head. You've got Jeff Johns and John Romita on a Superman book. We're hoping to see the sales. We've had Jeff Johns and Jim Lee on a Superman book. And now that book's getting canceled because of yeah. low sales. So, in this in sense, they're DC... Well, no, it wasn't is, Jeff Johns and Jim Lee. It was Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder. Scott Snyder. Okay, Who, my fault, you my know, fault. I don't want to get off subject, but his Batman's really been kind of, in my opinion, lately. Oh, yeah. He he pissed me off. Um, with the end. Once uh, I read Death of the Family, Death of the Family yeah. I yeah. was done. You know, to me, that wasn't the way Joker is written. And then, how bad well, it's the new 52, been... Junior. Shut up. <laughs> but how... it's the, that's their point. I'm not saying that is me. I thought it fucking sucked. I didn't like the ending at all. How good would it have been had when Joker revealed their faces in the uh, the dining tray? If that was legit. Yeah, no, I thought it should have been legit. Imagine... I mean, not like Bruce, it's fucking comics, for Christ's sakes. Bruce, Bruce Wayne has more money yeah. than God. He could have got them fixed up. You don't know it. Yeah. Comics. If people can die and come back, they could put faces back on. They should have left it. Should have been legit. It would have gave a lot of like, a lot it's more like that punch. That, 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 yeah, exactly. Yeah. That, that bam that was missing. I think like the only like dimmerment that actually came about was in the Batgirl tie-ins when Joker like cut off her, uh, Barbara Gordon's finger. Yeah, Barbara Gordon's mother's finger. Excuse me. That's like the only really. This memory that yeah. I can, it was you know, all psychological. Yeah, I mean, I know it's a different take on the joke, and everybody's got their take, but, but I, going going back, three fifty two Snyder was great, but we're not talking about him. We're talking about Romita and, and Johnson Superman. Yeah, and I, it's a wait and see, man. It's a wait and see. 
I, he's he's never worked on Superman before. Actually, he's what? He's never worked in DC before, right? No, this is, I think it's first, yeah. So, uh, so I mean, that right there is going to be sales for the fanboys. You know what it is? Because I'm remembering his crossover work, uh, Batman Punisher. Mm-hmm. And he, he was the artist on it. That's why I'm like, I knew he's drawn DC characters before. That's what it was. But, um, yeah, wait and see. I mean, I'm a fan of his art, but only in certain uh, certain titles. And I'm not digging the way the... the yeah, no, I don't look up. John's, I have faith in. Now, what I don't have too much faith in is John's coming off Aquaman and the new Aquaman writer, Jeff Parker. Um, Jeff Parker. That's a name that sounds so familiar, and I know I should know it, because I know I've read his stuff. Um, yeah, I'm really bad with association of writers. I'm trying to remember... I want. I, I keep wanting to say She-Hulk. I think he's writing She-Hulk now. I'm not sure. I read that first issue She-Hulk. Not for me. Um, but you know what? Hey, Jeff Johns can't write a book forever. No, oh, yeah, totally. So somebody's got to take mean, over. And I mean, if if uh, Jeff Parker can keep the flow going that Jeff Johns started, then that just opens the doors for all those other writers who would never have thought about writing Aquaman. Yeah, totally. And it might give people, you know, oh, oh absolutely. it's not just Jeff Johns who can make a book, you know? Well, I, I think part of it is is Jeff Johns took some of the you know he's the kid you poke fun at away from Aquaman, you know. Right. Yeah. He made he's brought more credence to the character. Yes. He, made Aquaman a badass yeah. that you could respect. Yeah. And uh, you know he's I think Jeff Parker's done an issue or two now by the time this will air. I know I've read at least one. Okay. And it wasn't bad. It seems it kind of has the same tones as John. So it's, he seems to be holding the reins. Uh, you know, you, you got to take time to build the story as well. No, you do. I don't like the the, the fans out there, man. You fanboys that read a single issue and you're like oh I didn't like where it was going especially if it's the beginning yeah, of no, an it's... arc or if it's a first issue I mean yeah the first issue should grab you to want to come back for number two but nine times out of ten dude you just you gotta give it the first arc in general yeah well it's that depends though I mean sometimes you pick a book and it's just not for you that case is, in point She-Hulk true. number one that might be I know there's a lot of She-Hulk fans out there I'm like uh, you know Fantastic Four She-Hulk that's association kind of thing yeah I think she's okay and I read it and I just didn't really care for it, so I won't continue. I guess I could agree with that. But other books, I do feel the need to give a chance to, even if it doesn't grab me after did you the first read, uh, Did you read X-Force number one, the new one? With Mero and... You Kate know, Williams? man, this this is what sucks, is I read the two previous ones, and I wasn't really caring for either one at all. Yeah. And then when they did the crossover together, I was like, oh, this is cool. And then they ended both and started the new one, and uh, I just... I couldn't get... I, didn't I tried to read it, it and I, I just didn't. I didn't finish it. I just, I was like, this is kind of boring. I think that says it all right there. I think I feel that way with a lot see, of Marvel books. Um, I can't remember the guy's name. He escapes me at the moment. The one who's writing that X-Force book. Simon Spurrier. Spur. Um, I'm sorry if I pronounced that wrong. He was writing X-Men Legacy with Legion. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a great book. I thought it was good for the first ten issues, and then I just got, I got bored of it. Did you? Yeah, it was like, I feel like they were dragging the storyline out way too long. Mm. You can't drag a storyline for 20, 25 issues. That's true. You got, and not the same thing. I mean, if it's moving forward, you know... Um, yeah, we'll see. I, I'm not going to pass judgment on them. Uh, I'm going to jump over to Marvel real quick. Origin 2, didn't even know this was happening. I think there's two issues out already. Didn't even know. Three, maybe. Three. Three. Wait, I you did I'm not know off. this was coming? Absolutely not. Wow. I jumped on the wagon at two. Wow. I had no idea. First of all, I was like, oh, why are they doing that? And I mean, and, and you know, you always do that when you see them do a sequel to a book. It's like, oh, they're just trying to make money. But it's actually a decent story so far, so I can't really. But I didn't know it was coming. I didn't like it. And then here we are. Three. No? I mean, I've read all three of them, but it's just like it's not really adding anything to his character. Like with the first, the first series, you were kind of reading into well, where he started. It's, and this it's one is giving just, you a play on the first meeting of him and Sabretooth, which I kind of like. It's always they've never really fleshed out that relationship. That's true. I didn't, and I, while know, you're I didn't not getting, a, yeah, you're not getting a different interpretation of Wolverine. Yeah, that you haven't seen before. You're getting the one that's getting, in continuity. Yeah. See the thing. Okay, no, I see that now. The thing I'm thinking when I said it didn't catch me was him. Just being a wolf, yeah, you know, yeah, that was. I was like, What the fuck, especially that first issue, yeah, where he was hunting with them, and, and but all it stuff. was was all narration and yeah. like more art than there was a story. It's like they sold you with the cover, yeah. it was like one of the ace tape covers, yeah, totally. So, didn't know that was happening. More Marvel news, I'm kind of excited about Scott Young doing a Rocket Raccoon book. That ought to be fun. That just sounds like one of those books where you're like, man, right. that you sounds like a like fun that, book. Right? Like, it's going to be energetic. Like, what comics need to be again? It needs that fun back. Yeah. You don't have to worry about, you know, oh, this ongoing storyline and this crossover. It just sounds like one of those books you can pick up and just have fun. Yeah. Man, what, I can't even remember the last book. I Bullshit. Um, Afterlife with Archie. Yeah, that is fun. That's a good book. That's a fun book. It is a know? fun book, Afterlife with Archie. 
Yeah, I love his uh, his variant covers, man. The babies, I love the baby covers. I great. like, you know, his art, his style though has gotten. He uses heavier pencils, mm-hmm. like shading different, because the like a lot of the characters they have a uh, thicker lines to them, and they're they're a little bit more sketchy. Remember when he first came to Marvel? You remember in the early two thousands that they imprint to Tsunami? Yeah. And it was like Mystique and Venom and uh, Human, Human Torch. Torch. Dude, Human Torch, he drew. That was some sick artwork. That's when he came out. He distinguished himself because he looked like he was a uh, like he came from tagging. Yeah, that, totally. Hip hop looking. Yeah, artwork. that's kind of like why I like that comic. Book yeah, and now now you look at the baby covers. Mm-hmm. Total, it just contrasts each other. I mean, which I guess signifies growth. I just prefer the the cleaner looking artwork. Okay, so <laughs> I gotta talk about this because you know it's. Was a big thing when we went away at Cataclysm. The Ultimate Universe was possibly going to end. I just read that. I just finished reading that about oh, a week yeah. or so ago. Yeah. And as we all know, the Ultimate Universe did not end. No, all they We're did going was to survive. All they did was throw Galactus into a negative, negative zone. zone with Thor the God or Lord Thor, or whatever King Thor, or whatever he's called now. Okay, you know I'm glad you brought that up because I've got that on here. But you, but you just jumped the gun. Nah, the, roll, the boss. Well, but no, so no, I didn't jump the gun because now, that, they're What's, the two that's trapped in a negative. Yeah, but is he okay? Yeah. Well, I'm going to come back to that in a second, but just Cataclysm, a lot of people thought the Ultimate Universe was going to end. I sure as hell did. They're launching some weird books, aren't they? Like, strange, like, isn't there a new Ultimates books, and it's going to be a weird... Yeah, it's like Spider-Man. It's basically the younger heroes that aren't mutants, and some of the X-Men, and like, uh, Sue Storm, Mm -hmm. uh, Johnny, I think. So it's going to be like the survivors of the Ultimate Universe. Pretty much. Is that going to be like the, the only younger Ultimate guys? Book? Like Iron Man's not on it. No. You know, no Black Widow. It's just like the younger, the younger guys of the Ultimate Universe. So do you universe. think the Ultimate Universe will survive another ten years? Another ten years? No. No. No, I can't see it coming out for another ten years unless. Five, maybe. The only way I can see it going ten is if they do something drastic every couple of years, not a fucking bi-monthly event like the regular 616 seems to do uh-huh. but you know like every two or three years doing something heavy and really yeah, shaking things up yeah, like, kind of like DC's doing well like how Marvel did or like the Ultimate Line did the death of Spider-Man shit yeah. the shit out of it totally and then they came back with the whole uh, couple divided we stand mm-hmm. thing and then with the X-Men and the Nation X thing and the Fantastic Four obviously Reed becoming uh, a villain yeah so you had these big things that impacted the rest of it you know so if you do something like that every so often just not overdone. No, I agree. I, I uh, I'm a big, I was a big, big supporter of the Ultimate Universe. Now back to King Thor. That was nice some shit because you know I've been uh, sticking with Thor. That's I, I can't not read that book. It's such a great book. You know I I didn't finish Worldbreaker. Was that the first story arc? So uh, the yeah. God Killer or whatever. God Killer. I think. Well, the, well, it went into the second part of God the arc. God Bomb. That's the one. I didn't finish reading that. That's where oh, I there were some great issues after that. Like the farthest I got with Malekith and everything. The farthest I got, That's I like believe, was when uh, the three Thors met up on the ship. That's as far as I got. It's awesome. And it's not that I didn't want to read it. It's just I fall behind. Yeah, no, I understand. And then it's just, I, dude, I forgot I can read them on my computer. Yeah, I'm a couple weeks behind so, too, man. A couple weeks. Try, the only book there's only been like three or four books I've kept up. As soon as they come in, I read them. Yeah, you know, superior, so, of course. But not Thor. So okay, this is this is what you brought up. King Thor's in the negative zone, huh? Because mm-hmm. King Thor battling Galactus, I was like... Battling? Battling. I said battling. You Galactus. said battling. Did I? Yeah. Maybe my battling and Galactus just ran together. Yeah, probably. It could have been. Battling. Anyway, simple. you could go back and be like, battling, battling. So I'm going to loop it, but I'm, so nah, I'm not that pop. What happened? But anyway, <laughs> my first question when I saw the... What the fuck? Because what? King Thor's on Earth. Right. And Galactus shows up to Earth. How did Galactus get out of the negative zone? I didn't see that. Hmm. Thor God of Thunder, 19 point now. Okay. The Last Days of Midgard Part 1. Oh, so that's not Ultimate related? No. I thought that was Ultimate no, related. Fucking Thor. Oh, shit. Yeah. For some, I'm thinking because at the end of Cataclysm... They uh, sent Galactus to the negative zone. Right, with Thor. And, then and the I'm next thinking week, that was the same... Because they the called him... The next week he shows up in Thor. Because they called him... Uh, so, wait, the ultimate... Well, who shows up in Thor? Galactus? Galactus. Right, that's what I'm saying. But the ultimate Thor, I could have swore he was called King Thor in one of those Cataclysm books. That's what I thought you were just talking about. Like, those two were going to go at it. I didn't know that it was... Like, okay, oh, no, okay, okay, yeah. You know, So you know how you get the three Thors and the God... What was that? God Killer arc and then yeah. the God Bomb? King Thor. Oh, okay. they, no, they haven't said if it's it's the same one or not, or if it's just a King Thor. This is why 
people hate the clone side of it. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. No, it's it, whatever, man. That shit doesn't bother me. It's like multiverse stuff. I feel like Marvel's doing some stuff DC used to do with the multiverse and creating different versions. And it's it's okay, but it's getting annoying trying to keep it all straight. But yeah, there you go. What the fuck? How'd you get out of there? How'd that happen? Uh, in other less confusing and disappointing news, Bruce Timm's doing a page that's going to show the history of Jean Grey and really? all new X Men. Yeah, nice, right? No, all new X Men twenty five. That's it. Very nice. Which is what, like, two weeks away? Should be pretty soon. Yeah, should be coming out soon. If Bruce it's Tim, not out already, that's awesome. Bruce Timm well, doing some Jean Grey, man. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Ha ha. Yeah. See what you did there. Bruce Timm's doing some Jean Grey. That's right, buddy. <laughs> No, hell yeah, uh, anything that Bruce Tim, yeah. anytime Bruce Tim puts his uh, his pencils to a page, magnificent. But a lot of people tend to forget that Bruce Tim is an artist because people think of, oh, he's just a producer of the Batman stuff and he's a, a, a show producer. Like, no, he can get down with his pencils, you know? Absolutely, man. His artwork is wonderful. So I'm excited to see that because I love that comic. That's great. Yeah. It's been a great book. Even its uh, crossover with Guardians has been fun. Yeah. Guardians has been a great book. I'm... I'm waiting to read that. I, I'm, I dig the Guardians. It's good. It's cute. And more. What else we got to do? Keep it going. DC covers. September. DC's bringing back the 3D covers for Future's End. And this time they're promising to have the amount that stores want. I don't care. Yeah, I, I don't care. I, I hate gimmicky covers. I think it's kind of stupid. I like gimmick covers, you know, when done. Like how DC does it once a year. Okay, cool. That's yeah, that was, yeah that was, go on to something new. You know, you know what, or fuck it. if you wanted to do Gimmicky Covers, do Chromium this year, whatever. Or holograms or some shit, right. you know. Like, back in the 90s... I always I loved was, those I, colored Chromium covers. You know, but I was cool with... Oh, great. With giving me something like that for special issues. Number one, number 25, 50. Right. Not number one, and then number two, three, four have all different right. variants, and then number five is a hologram. No, that's old. Yeah, it's ridiculous. I mean, we kind of... We did a whole podcast dedicated to DC. Yeah. And screwing up on this 3D cover thing, and now they're going to do it again. Yeah. Maybe it's their way to be like, no, 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 look, last, we didn't purposely screw you guys last year, you know? I don't know. I, I could care less right now at the moment. Yeah, I think it's a ridiculous move on, on DC's part, just trying, it's, it's Especially because a couple weeks ago, they re-released the 3D covers. Yeah. You can buy them as a set. Yeah, yeah. Sec- but there were that. second printings, but they still had the 3D covers on them. Ridiculous. It's ridiculous, man. Anyhow, it's moving on. Moving on, Magneto. Number one came out this week? Last, last week. week? Last week. Did you read it? Not yet, no. I want to, though. I haven't read it. Magneto's an interesting character, man. He's been here, he's been there, he's been all over the board, you know? Mm-hmm. And he's not one of those characters that, like, you know how sometimes in comics, and in comics is really bad out there's probably a million characters for some reason, I can't think of one right now, but they've never explained the transition from here to here, why the guy was on the left side, now he's over here. You know what I mean? Heroes that go back and forth from being villain and hero, then they don't get explained. There's just no... Right. I feel like you could read the journey of Magneto to where he is now. Hell, even within the, like, the last ten years of comics. I mean, AVX now has been really a lot of it. With him, his powers getting screwed up and the Phoenix Force stuff. Right, right. And he's been playing, what, second fiddle to Scott now for how long? How long has he been Sykes, bitch? Yeah. Five years while. longer? Been a while. Since Utopia? Wasn't it Utopia? That Magneto came to Cyclops and was like, you know what, you're doing it, dude, and I'm going to follow you. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. It's been a long time. I have not checked that issue out either, but... but uh, I didn't it, like the artwork on the cover. No? I thought it was interesting. You know, it's just this head, and then the the Magneto helmet, like, floating above him. Like, that was cool. My problem with it is that he shaved his head, and he yeah. looks like Xavier. Yeah, totally. Like he probably did it as an homage to his fallen friend, but it just—it looks like Xavier wearing a Magneto helmet, you know. And I don't know if that's maybe a, a, a message they were trying to send out to fuck with people. Like it's a hidden message in the art. I don't know. I just for some reason the cover really didn't catch my attention. No, no. I mean, I still want to read it because like you I said, mean, it is he's, Magneto. He's been interesting, man, and unc- uncanny what he's doing yeah. with like Shield and the. It's just—it's curious to see what he's going to do. But I guess the whole idea is that you know. He's left the X Men. He's going to go out and protect mutants his way. Right, right. He doesn't care who he's got, to, what he's got to do to do that. Which you know, that should be a good book. He's very trusted. Nomad. It's Nomad. It's just funny you mentioned Nomad because I actually read that book when it came out. The Jack Monroe Nomad in the nineties, mm-hmm. with the glowy, stupid discs. That I guess are actually from the seventies. Mm-hmm. Steve Rogers Nomad costume. I didn't know that. In other Marvel news, another new title from Marvel. Not really new, but a relaunch. 
Fantastic Four. He watches again, again. I haven't read it yet, and um, I'm not in a hurry to read it. I can understand that coming off of uh, that Matt Fraction. Was that Matt Fraction just read? Yes. The uh, you know, I like Matt Fraction, but Dude, well, my like, Fantastic Four sucked. My whole thing with not just Fantastic Four, but with the Marvel relaunches in general, why so many? I mean, I get, as, as, you know, from a business standpoint, the number one signal more money. But what happened in the days of, okay, so and so's run finished, the new writer comes in at this issue. It's like every time they get a new creative team, they get to get, get their own number one. It's like, what is that going to do to their egos? Oh, this is my series of it. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't know. I'm not a fan of it. I, I don't think you need to re entitle your book just because you put a new writer on there. Yeah, no, I, I don't need to either. Um, I actually read this the first issue, and uh, I I will read the second one. It's like um, um, that fraction run was just messed up. I just I didn't enjoy it at all. Another another um, reason they didn't need to relaunch. Kind of going back into that real quick. Wolverine number one. Yeah. What? Alan Davis? No. Was it? Al- yeah. I believe it was Alan Davis doing the book. Well, Paul Paul uh, or Cornell, I believe is his name. Mm-hmm. Writing Wolverine. Relaunch it, st- still the same writer. Why? What's the point? I don't know. That's kind of stupid. They could have, like, if it was a new story arc, they could have did it where how they've been doing the rest of their books, you know, where it's like point now. Yeah. Why not? Yeah, that's that works. I mean, it's... It was confusing as hell to, to readers, though. I've had people coming in like, is this number one or is this number whatever, you know? They're like, what is this? Why is there two issue numbers? Right, right. That confused me with, I think it was one of the Avengers issues that was like, Something dot inh, you know, for inhuman. Inhuman, yeah, it was like part of that crossover. I was like, so is there going to be another issue seven? Kind of like you remember how they had the uh, Age of Ultron? Yeah, the seven AU. For, or eight for Superior Spider? Was it eight or nine? Uh, but it was its own issue. Number six. It was okay. It was Superior. six eight AU. Yeah. And then there was still a regular six that came out that yeah. went along with the storyline, which uh, all that stupid tie-in crap. But no, it's actually good. I don't understand why they, they, they're beating the hell out of the like relaunch horse, I'll tell you that. For a company that shit-talked DC hard two years ago when they relaunched with the new 52, mm-hmm. they have been on that horse hardcore the last year and a half. Now, let me ask you. You read the first issue. Um, do they explain... I mean, I guess to some people it's a big deal. Uh-huh. To me, not as much. Do they explain the costume change? First issue, no. No. So they're just rocking the red yeah, and black? Yeah, they're just rocking the red and black. I don't, I don't really remember... No, that's the thing that sucks is I read so much. If something's not really great, mm. it doesn't stick with me. So they could have mentioned it. They might not have. I don't really remember that. No. For those so they must not have because I feel like that's something I would have remembered. Because I didn't keep up with the Matt Fraction run. Um, so I didn't you guys, I read like 10 issues. Oh, okay. Because I, I was just about to ask you so how did they end it. 10 issues, I was out. Okay. Yeah, I, I had enough of the Fantastic Four uh, Swiss Family Robinson through time and space. You know, it was mm-hmm. it just it wasn't for me. But the first issue, this seemed good. Yeah, but you know, I didn't need a relaunch. I don't think so. That kind of pisses me off that Amazing Spider-Man's coming back. Really? With a new number one. Yeah. That Why not be seven hundred one, man? Yeah. Why not be seven hundred one? You know, because they'll wait till you get Amazing. Let's put it this way. They'll wait till it hits eight hundred or seven fifty. Yeah, that and an Amazing Spider-Man number one will sell more than an Amazing Spider-Man seven hundred one to the commercial people. No, don't that, that's true. You know too. what I mean? Because like, oh, it's number one. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. I hate that. Collector's item, buy 50. Yeah, right. 40, 40. See, more news for uh, Marvel. I just got it. The Marvel deep here. Masterpieces is returning, man. I'm so excited. With, Dude, Joe Jusco has yeah. always been one of my favorite artists. Always. I, I loved those cards when I was kid. They were great. The comeback for 25th anniversary. He did the 1992 series, right? Cause yeah. Wait, who? Which well, one? no, 25 years it would have been. Yeah, he did the 92 series. Too much 93 there. was, um, like, I can see how they look. Was that 93, 94? I would know. It, was, it might have been 93. Because I know after the Joe Jusco series of Marvel Masterpieces, you had the ones by the Hindenburg Brothers. And then from there, you had the ones where uh, every three cards was one character, just by different artists. Yeah. I can't remember the year. I want to say that was the 95 one. But regardless, Joe Jusco coming back to Marvel Masterpieces, I'm very stoked for. The only thing I'm not liking about it, have you ever tried to buy in the last maybe five years? A pack of comic book trading cards? Yeah, they're expensive as hell. They're like 3 or $4 for yeah. like four or five yeah, cards. It's bogus. And some retail shops don't even carry them because they're not available at mass retail like Target and Walmart or like back in the day when I was collecting really? X-Men cards. They don't have them at Target or Walmart? Some do, some don't. Because they've got like... Target's they've got, got like... a decent collection of... No, as far as comic like cards? Card crap. No. Comic cards? Well, I'm no, talking those like are like collectible card games. Oh, no, no. I'm not like talking about Magic card games. Magic and Pokemon. Oh, yeah, yeah. They have that. But I mean like... 
actual trading cards. Yeah, no, I know that. They know don't that. carry that comic book stuff there. Really? Yeah, the closest they'll go is like Star Wars. Yeah. They don't carry any of that. But shit. they do. So, it's a ripoff. I bought a pack of like Justice League old Justice League cover cards. Yeah, and they were like four for like three fifty. Yeah, dude, no way. You know, and then the store has to. You know, they got to pay X amount for the box. The box. Let's be honest. The box that they pay it's not even that bad but in order for them you know make a profit they gotta jack that price up so damn much for a pack and then nowadays depending how big the set is versus the ratio that's included in the box you almost have to buy two boxes just to complete the set that's outrageous i remember back i remember buying um like basketball cards back in the day you buy a box of nba hoops you got like 15 cards in a pack packs were a buck right 36 packs in a box you made a set and a half Especially when Marvel got uh, the Marvel cards in their like midnight. Remember the Fleer Ultra X Men and mm-hmm. shit like that. All oh, that shit, dude. I've got about two to three sets of each of those card sets. Nice. Because I got the boxes, Just, you know. The, the masterpieces. I always wanted to get some of those. So when I saw this one, I was like, I'm gonna get these because mm-hmm. they were just great looking cards. Mm-hmm. I remember Marvel did that set that was just like shots from comic books. I hate that. That was terrible. I hate that. I mean, even though back then you're probably paying 75 cents for a pack of cards, but still. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, I remember that's how... <laughs> I remember that's like how much a comic book costs, man. Yeah. But Joe Jusco, I'm very excited to have him coming back to Marvel Masterpieces. I'm especially... Because I'm thinking about the set he did previously. And three cards out of that, I don't know, you might have your favorites. Three cards out of that set pop to me all the time. The Psylocke, because it was using all the promos. Mm-hmm. The Hulk, and Spider-Man in the Web. And the Spider-Man in the Web I actually purchased a couple of years ago at a Wizard World. I got it as a Litho. Nice. Like Litho size. And uh, he repainted it in 2002 or 2003. And he changed the way that Spider-Man's hands are on the web. Uh-huh. I believe in the original, he had his fingers, you know, he was like curled up like he's shooting the web. And on the new one, he's just kind of gripping the web. I was like, that's, that's pretty dope. And I had him sign it when I met him uh, last year, or the year before it was a Told him I was going to get a tattoo of it, and he told me if I did it, I'd have to tag him in it. And uh, it'd be that's very cool. awesome. So wrapping up uh, everything we talked about here, Johns and Romita, Superman, wait and see. Origin 2. Poop, in my opinion. That's yeah, all right. Jeff Parker, Aquaman, got to give it time. Mm-hmm. Scotty Young, Rocket Raccoon, if you don't like this, you're just an a-hole. Yeah. Ultimate Universe for five more years? We're giving it five years. Yeah. Scotty, or I'm sorry, Scotty Young on Rocket Raccoon. Man, you said that's, that that's, I know. I just, that excites me. <laughs> it really does. And then Bruce Tim doing Page of Death. That'll be a good book to grab. Yeah, we said anything Bruce Tim does anything. is really magic. Thor, awesome as always. Magneto, mm. Frederick's still out on that. And uh, <laughs> Marvel, get crazy with three launches. I'm sure there'll be more of this in the months to come as the year goes. Mm-hmm. This will probably be our bitch for this year for relaunches for Marvel. You know, I gotta bring it up real quick. You know, talking about relaunches and shit. We have it on last season when we were at the um, the Batman convention out in Indiana, the oh. Batmobile, and we interviewed Mark Wade. And we asked Mark Wade about the Marvel now relaunches and shit. And he's like, "Well, it's not a, a hardcore relaunch like New Fifty Two was. It's like they're soft relaunches, and not everything is getting relaunched. What comes out next week? I don't know what comes all out new Daredevil, season. Marvel now." All new Marvel now, Daredevil, number one. Oh, really? Yep. Same Jeez. creative team. Really? Same creative team. Okay. The only difference is the status quo. Matt Murdock, he got barred for uh-huh. following the law in New York, and now he's moving to San Francisco. Oh, boy. Or San Diego. One of the, San Francisco. Yeah, San Diego sounds too Hispanic for Matt Murdock. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. So more crappy. Mark Wade, you lie. More crappy relaunches for Marvel, but awesome. Oh, I love Daredevil. Go. Marvel Masterpiece is coming. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I gotta, I'm gotta. i waiting on that. That'd be sweet. Depending, I might just get a box or two. I, oh, I might ask Joe Jusco to sell me a box or two. <laughs> there you go. As always, this is the Spinner Rack. Get your 31 Comics News. Showing us back here next week as we discuss a little more comics news and get us caught up for the end of 2013 and beginning of 2014. As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian Adams. Junior, mouthful of Taco Bell, Ruiz, co-host of Comics Remix. As always, you can get everything, the Spinner Rack and Comics Remix at the hub, comicsremix.com. For sure. Like us on Facebook, check us out on Twitter, email us. It's all there. Word. That's it. We'll see you guys next week. Thank you for coming back. Peace.